I had the police come to my house at four o'clock in the morning and they said, here is a government, it's called an Osman warning. An Osman warning is when there is serious intelligence that people are about to kill you. Then it goes on to read what you're not allowed to do. You're not allowed to get a weapon. What am I supposed to do? Put a little chain on my door. All right. Guest. Long yes. form. We've been, I've been having, guy. We, well, we've been having him on. We've been having him on for a while now. It's been a while. And now he's just he's just blowing up. Mm -hmm. Four choice of words, given the fact that many people want to kill him, and that's their preferred method of taking somebody out. Uh, you can follow him, TommyRobinson.online. His Twitter is, there's a story behind this, I'm sure, at Robinson Parody. So I'm sure there's some kind of permaban that happened there. Uh, he's everywhere. Mr. Tommy Robinson, thank you for being here, sir. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me back on. Absolutely. I'm glad. Now, what's the, what's the story behind Robinson Parody? Did you, did you lose your Twitter account? Yeah, that's not me. So... <laughs> I, I was removed from Twitter last oh, week, two right. weeks ago. Well, I don't know why I have this wrong. I was down. removed. Do you know the reason they get for removing me? So, so first of all, they gave me a week long ban because I said that 90% of grooming convictions were Muslim men. Grooming is the gang, gang raping of young children in the UK. Now that's actually a fact. 90% are Muslim men. 20% are called Mohammed. Yes. So they banned me for a week for that. And then they removed me for saying Islam promotes killing people. Well, it would seem as though um, the statement unfortunately aligns with statistical realities. And, <laughs> and that uh, is the problem with the Twitter. That's a, that's a trip to their algorithms. If you'd have just said, you know, for example, Tommy Robinson is a Nazi, I think you'd be well within oh. your rights. Of course. Um, well, you've been ever, so first off, before we get into some, some of the very specific stories recently, you, you, you have gone completely independent. Tell people what that means and where people can best find you and support you. So I worked for Rebel Media for approximately a year where I learned to see that the future, the future is bringing people or bringing people. I want people to see what I see. I want them to experience and see the places and the problems that I see, the people that I talk to. I wish I'd have thought of it 10 years ago. I wish I'd have been like everyone else, but I left Rebel Media. I went on my own so that I'm my own boss, so that I'm in control of the stories I run. People can follow me on TommyRobinson.online. I have plans to build a studio like yourself. I have plans as well to build, to get a double-decker bus. Um, a double-decker bus, I want to turn one side of it into a TV screen, and I want to travel the UK showing people what's happening in those towns and cities. So making mini documentaries about areas, going to those areas, hopefully getting out of them alive, but showing people truthfully, this is what's happening on the ground. Yeah, well, it sounds a lot like a super secret sh van that we've yeah. been uh, building up here for uh, for stateside for when we do the live shows at schools because there's so much equipment that we have to bring and these live shows that we have to put on. A uh, good idea if you can get that done, a double-decker bus. It's the billboard for death. It's the billboard for death, death with Tommy Robinson. <laughs> well, hold on. Before before I uh, continue, I want to show this one clip. This is a, a, a recent video. For those of you who, who, who missed this, a little run-in that he had with uh, a Muslim man who was threatening his life, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. Uh, this is get it away from the camera. You tried to touch our camera. Right. This is I'm trying to touch the camera then. I told you that five times. Keep your life. I will keep my life. You're not going to take a What do you think you're going to take a life? Take a life. Let me use you. Let me look. 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 Let now, Tommy, when I watched that clip, I saw it. Uh, what struck me most is there was an officer there, right, that looked like there was a police officer. He didn't seem to have a problem with it because the guy was running up threatening you like this. Even in the UK, it seems as though you're well within your rights to do that. <laughs> well, the, the man had told me specifically he was going to kill me. Mm -hmm. I had been warned about going to that area. Do you know what? I went to Italy for the elections, mm -hmm. and I spent an hour researching what's happening in, the, in this one city. And what I found was just, I found a Somalian man who went into a hospital and whilst an Italian woman was in, in bed having labor, giving labor for a baby, he climbed on and raped her. I then found that an Eritrean man had chopped up an Italian girl just two weeks before, murdered her, raped her, chopped her body up and left it in a suitcase. I found that a 75 year old woman had been raped just a mile from where I was standing by, by, by a Sudanese man. I found unbelievable stories, horror stories. The only sort of stories you would have previously read about in Africa or in South Africa or in the Middle East, right here in Europe. I found one case, one case where a, a man, a, 
Polish man was with his partner and a group, a gang of Muslim migrants beat him up and then he made, they made him watch as they gang raped his wife on a beach for hours. They made him watch. And these were stories that, again, it's just, this is Europe now. These are stories that are commonplace in every country in Europe. Well, let me ask you this, because some people will say, well, why are you focusing? If you just go out looking for stories of Muslims who happen to commit crimes, you'll find them. Statistically, that's not okay, the so, norm. So I, I went to Italy and it, Italy, Italy had just had their election and La Liga had gone from 4% to 18%. The left had been completely booted out of politics. Mm -hmm. This was a political revolution in Italy. So I asked why? Why has the country swung like this? Let's see what problems there are that have resulted in the next coalition government. The leader of La Liga says that Islam is incompatible with their country and they will probably deport 600,000. So I wanted to know why they have won the election. Let's look at the problems. Let's look at what's resulted in this. And that's why I started to find unbelievable horror stories that were unthinkable crimes that, that you hadn't heard of on the shores of Italy, but, but, but this commonplace. Yeah. And then I found a journalist, a female journalist, who live on screen was violently and sexually attacked and dragged down the street live, right, reporting the news live by Muslim migrants. These are all migrants. And, and the, the story that shocked me was all four of those instances I just told you, Yeah. all four of the men convicted had been refused and should have been deported from Italy, but they weren't. So all of this was failed asylum cases, but they were allowed to stay. So all of these victims could have been saved if the laws would have been enforced and the, and, and the guidelines would have been followed. But because they weren't, and that is why the Italian people elected a government, a new government that will remove the people in power who have left their women at prey like it, it really is so, unbelievable that you haven't heard of these stories. The people stateside certainly haven't, but you would think in Europe at least, you know, you'd think it may, I don't know, at least the Chiron on BBC. Uh, not at all, not at all. And, and you're painted as a racist, as a Nazi. One thing I think a lot of people don't realize, I mean, you were raised in, am I pronouncing it correctly, Luton? That's my pronunciation. Okay. So Luton. we pronounce it Luton. We, we drop the T. Yes, Luton. The Luton. Yes, just like but when I watched 007, Luton. they say 007. I'm like, why don't they say, why don't they say the? Why doesn't, why doesn't Judy Dench say then? I'm confused. They invented a language. Um, so you're raised there and pretty diverse area. So a lot of your friends growing up didn't look like you. Your problem here is with an ideology and the systemic political corruption that allows it to victimize people. I've been watching you for a while. I think this is your fifth time on the show. When people would come on and say, well, hold on, Tommy Robinson, he's, he's a racist. I'm going, do you know anything about, do you know where he was raised? Do you know who his friends are? He just hates Islamic rape. How is that controversial? <laughs> but it, it is, so, so yeah, L Luton is, um, Luton's one of the most multicultural and diverse towns in Europe. Yeah. If you If you got all of my friends together, all of us, are the sons of immigrants. My mother was an Irish immigrant, but then other immigrants would be St. Lucian, Jamaican, all over the Caribbean, Italian, Bulgarian, Polish. We are a town full of immigrants, but there's one problem in our town. It doesn't come to race or country of heritage. The problem is split ideologically through religion. We've never seen racial tensions. We only see religious tensions. Right. So yeah, so when I talk about these issues, people say about racism, that's simply been used, and I'm glad that after 10 years now or 15 years of combating it, people don't usually associate that anymore. People now finally say he's against Islam. Right, and so then and they've pivoted to Islamophobia. Right, but they've tried to make that seem as though it's a form of racism, right? And especially states that it's Islamophobia, racism. Well, hold on a second. Islam is not a race. We have uh, Johnny Jihad over here from state in the United States. We have women in the United States with hijabs, blonde hair and blue eyes. That people convert to it. It's the most converted to uh, religion in the American prison system. Why? Because it's going, hey, you hate and you want to commit evil. Here, here's a book justifying your acts of violence. That's another big lie people don't talk about, that it's the fastest growing religion. It grows ex exclusively by birth rate and through the prison system. That's it, nowhere else. And for some reason, people on the news, even just as the talk, well, one of the fastest growing religions in the world, it's a lie. I don't know how they do it. You okay, go ahead. You, you also can't leave it. So it's not gonna go down in that's numbers good. because it's punishable by death. That's a good point. It's and not like the Episcopalians were like, all right, well, we'll still see you at the potluck. Yeah, you'll see me at the potluck. I'm just an atheist now. Okay, yeah, so you're, you're gone. But uh, if you don't convert in prison, at least you get a nice pair of teeth on the state. It's true, exactly. Well, I mean, you did prison time a long time. So, I mean, this is one thing I do want to and give you credit for. Uh, 
to an unbelievable degree. A lot of people out there hold themselves out as ballsy people, and I'm doing the stuff that people out there won't mm -hmm. do. Tommy Robinson was beaten within an inch of his life in a prison in the UK. We've talked about that. Go back to that interview. He's out now, and he's been confronting people on the street. You did a video, which I thought was incredible. Where you're you real found life Paul some... Kersey. Yes, real life Paul Kersey. <laughs> Paul Kersey. Tommy Robinson is Death Wish. Um, <laughs> you found this kid who had sent you death threats. Uh, and and, and conf let me show the video here. And you confronted this person. I, I just... I just foreshadowed. I said kid. But I don't think we, you didn't know it was a kid when you found him. Let's roll this clip and we'll come right back. Can I ask you what, what it is I've said or done? Yeah. That if, even if you didn't want me murdered, what it, is, what it is about me or what I've said that you so feel so strongly against? Just, just don't agree with what you do. Can you give me one example of what I've said or done that incites hate? Well, just, just being a part of the EDO is and street protesting against the whole of, of Islam. What, what education you have on Islam? Now, it struck me, Tommy, first off, did you know this was a kid? Wait, how did you find him? No, so basically, anyone who talks about my children, that changes it, yeah? So I saw these videos that he put online saying, I'm going to kill your family, I'm going to slit your mother's throat, I'm going to kill your kid, I'm going to rape your daughter. And then all of these things. That and, little, and that little percent sent those? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And all of the references he made, all of the references he made were about taking the property of... So all of it was religiously entwined right. with what he was saying, which for me is a worry, especially with, with my... I have three young children. So I then called the police. I videoed the meeting with the police. I said, are you going to take this seriously? They assured me they were. They told me how many different units and organisations were, were all over this. So I said, OK, fine. I then went home, but I was uncomfortable sitting at home because I knew what he'd said. And I'd spent, I put a thousand pound reward up on Twitter to say anyone who gives me the identity of who this man is, I'll pay them a thousand pound. I had seven children who went to school with him. Did you have Contact. to give out seven thousand pounds? No, I didn't. I gave out the first one. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say, or you, you could. So I, I did, I, I, because I'd love to be able, I'd love to be able to do that again. So I, I gave out a thousand pounds, right? And then, and then I got his address. So when I met the police, I said, "Here's his name. Here's his address. I've done your work. Go and get." <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, they might not be so primed to help you. I've done your work. I've done your <laughs> job. Yeah, and then what do we have left to do? But it's true. But it was it was incredible. I'm I'm amazed knowing that that context, how civil you were with the kid. It really did seem like you were trying to teach him a lesson at that point, and not just be an aggressor. I don't think this kid knew what he was doing. He had no idea as to what it is that you talk about. That was so striking to me. We had the same thing at SMU. Kids holding up protests, uh, protest signs that weren't theirs, and they couldn't tell you a single thing I'd said. Do you find that a constant when you confront people who have this idea of you? Constantly. The whole time. With this kid, I realized within seconds that he was mentally ill. Within seconds of looking at him. So I, it, this could have turned out so different. I sat outside his house for six hours watching his front door. And when his door opened at six o'clock in the morning for him to go to prayer, that's when I caught him. But then I was shocked that 24 hours after I've sat down and told the police who he is, and he put a statement out saying he's going to go kill an English lady. He could have killed an English lady. He could have killed my kids. And they, they've done nothing. And then when I, but, but, but then it was very apparent that he was a victim as well. Although no matter what he said, he was a mentally retarded kid who has been used and abused. That's what he was. He had the, I'd say he had the mental age. My daughter's 10. I get more sense out of my daughter. When, he, he asked me for an arm wrestle, mid-argument, an arm wrestle. So it's very clear that he, he had serious learning difficulties. Seriously. He, he, had, right. he had a mental age probably of a 10-year-old. And I asked him that. The first thing I said, have you got learning difficulties? And he said, yes. And it was, it was clear that he did. Yeah. And then I, that's why I rang him an ambulance. But, um, and if you look, we've had three terrorist attacks in the UK that have all been from people with mental, with me, me, mental, mental, mental ages of young children. Yeah. That are used, abused, sent out to bomb. Well, I, th I think that's also important to note because in the United States, where we're talking about the Second Amendment, they just go, mental health, mental health. I'm going, hold on a second. There are a lot of people with mental health issues who aren't aggressive. But if you combine that with an ideology that actually encourages aggression, just like with the prison system that justifies actions, just because someone is depressed doesn't mean they lose their rights. Or, or weed. <laughs> right, or weed. Well, good example. I would imagine probably with the, pr the, the, the prison stint that you had, there were probably some times where you felt pretty down, pretty depressed. You could have been diagnosed that way. But he, if we were... I didn't go kill anyone. What was that? <laughs> 
I think I'd kill anyone. That's what I mean. No, 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 I know. But, you know, maybe yourself. But um, the point is that, that, you know, you had a hard go. But in the United States, you don't forego your rights because of that. In the UK, with no Second Amendment, right, um, how do you protect? How, how do you do this and, and feel secure? How do you protect yourself? At least in the United States, someone like yourself would have that as a fail safe. Yeah, you keep your head in a swivel, but they can protect their own and so can their family. You can't there. Uh, genuinely, w what is that like? I had the police come to my house at four o'clock in the morning. They woke my whole family up and they said, here is a government, it's called an Osman warning. An Osman warning is when there is serious intelligence that people are about to kill you. Mm -hmm. So they gave me an Osman warning and they said, Al-Shabaab, a terrorist group from Somalia, Somalia area, who two weeks prior had massacred hundreds of people in the Kenyan shopping mall. Al-Shabaab have named you to be caught, killed at all costs. What you're not, then it goes on to read what you're not allowed to do. You're not allowed to get a weapon. You're not allowed. So basically, what I said to them is, what am I supposed to do? Put a little chain on my door. Yes. It just told me, and, and, and the police have given me six of these. Six of these serious threats. I had six Muslims who were arrested in a car. They had guns, bombs, and IEDs, suicide notes, on the way to kill me. And I've, I'm not allowed to. If you watch my videos... For the past 10 years, I walk with my hands behind my back. So when, when I'm in a situation, I didn't in Rome, and I didn't most recently against Antifa, because I'm fed up of having my face beaten. So, but, but I constantly have to be, not just, not, not am I not only allowed to have a weapon to protect myself, but I'm also fully aware that if I try to protect myself, I may end up in prison right. for fighting against, for being a racial attack. Right. So I'm constantly not just cautious of all of that. I'm cautious of all of it. And um, but was it the mayor of London just called I... for knife control? Just called for knife control in London. I don't even. I don't, I, apparently, you guys already do have knife control. Yeah. Um, I mean, what is it? I have this right now. Someone just just gave this to me as a gift, which will be totally illegal. It's just a. a, a I've, I've already stabbed myself with that knife. Yeah, I know. It's it's, it's a very strong, strong spring. Yeah, I, you know. Now they're saying knife control. I'm going. Hold on a second. When, when people say it's just an assault weapons ban, and they go, "Well, actually, it's just a, it's just a semi-automatic ban," and they go, "Well, actually, it's it's a mental health issue." Well, actually, it's a universal. Well, actually, it's a gun registry. And then they go, "Well, stop." Well, okay, with your straw man, what do you you think there's going to be knife control? It sounds so absurd because what can you do? People have kitchen knives unless all cutlery is plastic knives and forks there is no way to implement knife control uh, on a general populace all of life at is all. an airplane cabin <laughs> right exactly exactly all of life is an airplane cabin yet that's what they've been calling for in london I, why why and how have they not been learning from the mistakes tommy i, I watch it from here I, first off i'm very concerned that it comes here to the united states that's my concern and, and, and i also Comment. cannot i genuinely i try to understand people who disagree with me so at least i can understand their arguments I, I'm at a loss, man. Maybe you can help me. Well, I've got three children. I go to bed every night, and I'm aware that people at some point are going to come to kill me. And I'm aware that I have no way of defending my family. And that is a, a gut-wrenching, gut terrifying, and also a sad feeling. Oh, yeah. There's nothing I can... And that's just it. So forget about going out of my house. I can't even defend them in my house. And, I, and I'm not allowed to. And, I, and we have no way of having weapons. We're not allowed them. You know the knife you just pulled out? Yeah. I'd go to jail. To be, if I had that, I'd go to jail. Yeah, I know. Something in Canada. Right. Yeah. I'd go to prison for that. By the way, this isn't any more dangerous than a kitchen knife. That's something, too, that people... Right. So if someone wants to come into your house with a kitchen knife, or, of course, with a gun, or a bomb, or a pressure cooker with some nails in it, they can do it. This is actually smaller than the steak knives in our house. It's, it's, we, it's... It, we, 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 don't have, we don't have firearms in the UK. There were 30 shootings in my hometown, 30, in a four-month period. So the criminals still have guns. Right. The terrorists still have guns. Knife crime. Sadiq Khan, the mayor, he stopped stop and search. His, his whole way to power and what he claimed was to stop the racist stop and search procedures of the police. Mm -hmm. Since stopping that... Murders, knife crime, gun crime, rape, everything has gone up upwards of 30%. We just overtook New York for more murders for the last two months in, in our capital city than New York. London has become, we, London is the acid attack capital of the world. We have more acid attacks in, in London.
Yeah, that's so something I, that really I, I disturbs me, like, to my, to my soul. There's one thing, you know, shooting. We were just talking about this. Shooting, knifing, acid attacks. You're not even doing it with the intent to kill. You're just doing it with the intent to ruin somebody's life. That's the only purpose behind it. It is evil uh, just crystallized in one action. I think there's a special place in hell for people, and against women, very, very commonly in yep. the UK. Have you thought about trying to get your sorry-ass stateside? Um, I, 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 I don't, I couldn't get in. I couldn't get in. I don't know. So in 2000, mm, 2010, I landed at JFK airport and I was held and deported. And I was told specifically I was deported because the British said they didn't want to, them to let me in. So I come back in 2011, I illegally entered America. Um, I received 10 months in prison for it. Oh, geez. I come to New York. I come to New York and I give a speech as a warning to America. And I'll be honest, I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I also felt the moral, uh, the moral obligation to do it, to warn people in your country of what's just happened in mine, what I've seen in my hometown, far outweighed. If I'm morally right, and I wasn't that bothered about the law, if I'm honest, so, but, but I, got, I got 10 months in prison for that in the UK. I spent two days in New York. If I'd have known, I'd have spent two months there. Yeah, well, you know what? You, you, you just have to go to a sanctuary city and take up residence. That's what you do here illegally. You just you don't have enough. <laughs> Grow a mustache. Grow a mustache. Hang out by Home Depot. Yeah. It is amazing to me. Buy a low rider and you're the, good. You, the, Tommy, Robert, you are the one person who has been caught for entering the country illegally and actually followed the law <laughs> and went back. <laughs> The, Amer the Americans didn't prosecute me. It was the British. Oh. The Brit I, I got home. I got in. I got in on September 10th, 2011. I got in. I got in through JFK Airport. I was then arrested six weeks later by the British on the motorway in the UK. I was straightway remanded in prison, and I spent 22 weeks on solitary confinement <laughs> for two days in New York. Maybe, maybe and the, the maddest thing. Maybe the I British were a Before I did it. I found ISIS fighters who had done the same crime, and none of them went to jail. None of them. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's because Nancy Pelosi said that would be mean. Uh, <laughs> Tommy, here's what, you, you know, listen, I, you, sh you should never enter, enter the country illegally, but it's very easy to fly to the hellhole that is Mexico, and, uh, you know, l l Google Maps El Paso. You're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> at least that's what ISIS does. That's what these people do terrorists do all the time. I'll be in the studio next week. I'll be in the studio next week. <laughs> well, listen, um, have you thought about going, like, to Poland, at least? They seem to have their act together. Poland seems to be the one place right now. Well, now I guess you're saying Italy. I haven't been following it a ton. I know Lauren Southern uh, was following that story. But Poland seems to be the one place. It's kind of a just an absolute turn of events where they're going, no. No, we're not being beholden to the political. We're not doing this. We're not allowing our culture the to be. Balls finally to be uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it seems as though Poland ain't taking no crap. Is that the only place left? No, Hungary, Poland, Czech Republic, Austria, there's a growing movement and a growing grouping together of countries. I, I went to Poland for their Independence Day. What you realize with Poland is Poland was wiped off the map for so long. Right. They have, Poland has suffered under communism. Uh, Hungary, Czech Republic, these countries know what it's like to lose your freedom to not have your freedom. So so does East Germany. That's why the biggest resistance for the alternative for Deutschland political movement, it's in East Germany. Because these people know what it's like not to be able to talk about something, not to be able to speak about. And that's what, so co replace communism with Islam. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're now seeing. And these countries, Viktor Orban is being re-elected tonight for his fourth term as a leader of Hungary. He was arrested in 1987 for opposing communism. There's a famous picture of him being held. These, these people know what it's like to fight for their freedom. I'm from a generation now in Britain where, and in Europe where we think this peace that we have, we think this is life. This has never been life. People have never had such an easy life and, and we're willing to give it away because we have taken it for granted so much. That's what I see. Yeah. That's what and, I see and by the way, this isn't the first generation to do that. That's the thing. Remember, if you, if you remember the famous speech uh, with Pearl Harbor, you know, a generation of playboys. They thought America there was a generation of playboys. They had, you know, been fattened up. This generation, they were kind of post. Uh, uh, at this point, they were they were post Great Depression. They're saying these younger people in America had become sort of stagnant. This idea that they were living a life of luxury. They were bon vivants, and uh, Pearl Harbor shook them up. It only takes one event. You know, that's the thing. It's just we've gone a long time without it being a global catastrophic event. I guess I always 
thought that maybe Europe, since you guys all got kind of screwed until we jumped in, would re would have remembered it a little bit more. Um, but no, it, it really is remarkable. I and mean, that's one constant that I noticed with what you do. Um, anyone who watches your content, again, TommyRobinson.online, they would know. The people who hate you don't know. You address Islam, the political ideology that it is. And we see that happening. We see it with actual Sharia law in courts across Europe. People here say that won't happen here. It's happened. It has happened. It is just as much a political prescription as it is a religion. It's not the same as Christianity. It's not the same as Buddhism. It's not the same as Hinduism. It's not the same as any other religion. And so when people jumped on, for example, Ben Carson, he said, I believe that uh, the con I, I think he said the Constitution and the Quran, or he said the Constitution and Sharia law. I don't know exactly what the, it was, either the Quran or Sharia law. He said, I believe they're incompatible. People jumped on him. I, I couldn't think of a statement that's more logical. I and, and the people who jump on him and the people who you said to come up to oppose you and the people who stopped me in the street, they have no idea what we even stand for. And, and they have no education. When I have people come up to me to, to, to argue the point for Islam, and the first thing I ask them is, tell me what you know about the Prophet Muhammad. Middle East squat, nothing. Have you read the Quran? No. Mm -hmm. So what you're defending something you know nothing about, yet here you are calling me ignorant. I've looked in and researched every point I'm talking about, and you're here to shout me down with nothing. But I, I think that Britain now and Europe especially my country, is so primed and ready now more than ever. The response I get now in public is a very heartfelt and warming response for me because after years of being slated or slandered and the media, what, what I sometimes laugh about, I, I, I take enjoyment in the fact that the government, the media, the police, they've all done everything they can to try and ostracise and destroy what we're saying and who I am. And right now I've got more support than I've ever had. So... Well, That's a good point. And I, I have noticed that, Tommy. I've noticed that because I, I will say for a while they were relatively successful. And I think maybe this going independent and getting your message out there. I mean, you're you're all over the place. I've seen people who say, I hate Tommy. I've never but the guy has brass balls and he's right about this. There are a lot of people whose minds have been changed. And I think that's because you can get directly in front of them as opposed to before. They were always hearing the story from someone else, namely people who don't yeah. like you. So so you've noticed that shift yourself. And that, that that's why they've removed me from Twitter. Now, that's why eventually they'll remove me from Facebook. That's why I will be closed down on YouTube. As will most people. We saw Jack, the CEO from Twitter, saying about conservative ideas this week. He retweeted an article saying this is a great article. That article was about a civil war in America where we must silence the conservative ideas. Right. Now, that's what they're doing here. So what they want to be able to do, they want the media to slander us, demonize us, dehumanize us and attack us. And us not even have any way of replying or responding or arguing or just clearing our name, just being able to say, that's not what happened. This is what happened. That's not what I said. Listen to me. Don't listen to what the media say. I say, listen to what I say. It's a very di big difference. It, it is different. And let me ask, speaking of which, I'd like to ask you, since obviously you're, you're there, uh, uh, I guess we say stateside. Do you say Europe side? Probably not. We just say across the pond. With, uh, with Lauren Southern, who was, who was, was banned from the UK, what's, what's the story there? Because I know we haven't had her on since then, I don't think. I think it's been a while. It's been a while. What happened exactly, and how was the situation remedied? So Lauren come to Luton, and this was our, our plan. Our plan was to launch a media channel that will cover the whole of Europe, that would look something similar to Infowars, but it would be hosted by myself with Lauren. Now, obviously, they're aware of what our plan was, and Lauren has been banned for life from the UK. She was arrested and held under Article 7 of the Terrorism Act. She was held under the Terrorism Act. Now, what she did is she come to Luton. So, so I just to... want to make this clear. Uh, it seems to me that Lauren Southern, but not terrorists, are being held under the Terrorism Act. Am I getting that correct? <laughs> and, and when Lauren... 110 pound dad, blonde chick. <laughs> it, we've had 450 ISIS fighters return. A thousand jihadi brides have come back to the UK. We've just had a preacher who's banned from preaching in Pakistan tour our country. We had a terrorist who was one of the most recent cases last year, who was, he tried to join ISIS in Italy. He lived in Italy, a Moroccan living in Italy. He tried to join ISIS. They stopped him. He told them, I want to be a jihadist. <laughs> he then, they then put him on the watch list. He then left Italy. He come to London. They didn't stop him. They didn't arrest him. They actually watched him as he got in a van 
and he went and killed nine people. But he wasn't stopped. Like, but don't, don't worry, Lauren Southern is not in the UK. We're all okay. Good Lord. The constant I'm hearing is that is, is, is they say we're fear mongering, right? Yeah. But they're, they're afraid of ideas. I'm afraid of bombs and rape on yes. beaches. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, I think I would say that's a, I wouldn't, I don't even know if that classifies as a phobia. I would say that's a legitimate grievance I would, being raped I would mercilessly so. on a beach and not being a fan of it. Yeah. I would say you have a legitimate cause uh -huh. for concern. But ideas. Lauren ben Shapiro, most dangerous man. Yes. Yeah, ben Shapiro, world's most dangerous man. So, so Lauren is banned for life from the UK. That's a pretty serious ban. You uh, can't move to the United States. Can't get out. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is this is uh, it's getting to the point where w w what do you do? What's what's the next step? You just keep doing what you're doing in Europe, and, and Lauren will do it Canada side. We, we saw that on the same week that Lauren was stopped, so was Brittany Pettibone. She's a journalist from America, a, a social commentator from America. She was arrested with her partner. They were held in a detention center in the UK for three days. Do you know the reason they gave her why she was held and deported? Breasts. Because she was coming to interview me. Because oh. she was coming to interview me. <laughs> Brittany Pettibone. Who'd, th who'd have thought we could do it through Skype, tolls? <laughs> Take that, you English truancy officer pricks. Um, well, I'm, I mean, that's how I picture all English cops, truancy officers, you know, twirling a baton. With the yeah, hat. Yeah. I know they're not. Uh, just like not all Canadian cops are Mounties. So the reason was interviewing you. I mean, at a certain point, it does. I hope people watch this interview and see, see your content and go, all right, there is a bigotry of soft expectations. There's a bigotry of low expectations. Because let's say I hate you. Let's say I hate Lauren Southern. Still, to ban someone from the country simply for interviewing you. You know, I remember when I first interviewed uh, uh, Imam Chowdhury. First off, we had to set up a whole separate Skype account, remember, and everything. And it was, yeah. it was we, we got a whole different computer. It was the first time I ever interviewed Dean Kane and yeah. Imam Chowdhury in the same show. But now he's being double converted in prison. So. Yes, well, exactly. But back then, this was about two years before he was sent yep. to prison. And on air, he basically praised ISIS. And uh, uh, you talked about Syria. He basically said, I deserve to die on air when yeah. he was talking about it. He said, I deserve to die. And he praised ISIS. And I'm going, hold on a second. This guy is speaking in the UK where people have been arrested for speaking things far, far. People, someone was arrested for doing a cover of Kung Fu Fighting. And it was considered racism because someone heard it outside of a karaoke bar. And this guy just said he supports ISIS and wants me to die. And he's going to hang up and go have himself a, a, a sandwich. I, I couldn't get my head around it. I, I don't know what to do about it. I, I can't believe that this is a country. We were, I've organized. So after, the, after they stopped Brittany Pettibone, the journalist from interviewing me, by the time they deported her three days later and she walked out of the Austrian airport, I was waiting with a camera. So as she walked out, I said, well, they haven't won. We're now going to do that interview right here. And it's going to be watched by a hundred times more people than would have watched it. Thousands of people. And they stopped Martin Selner coming. Martin Selner is a part of generation identity. That's not my politics. I'm not an identitarian. I don't, so, but what they did by stopping him, he was coming to speak in Speaker's Corner. Speaker's Corner in the UK, if you know about it, there's 300 years of history. Some of the most controversial figures in our history have spoke there, from Karl Marx to Lenin to George Orwell. It's the one place in our country that we're supposed to have free speech. But now, because of Islam, because it's, there's a mafia mob of Muslims there, they are now worried by people who will talk about Islam going there. So they arrest them, they detain them, they deport them. That's their answer to it. Yeah. Now, the week, the week after that, I, I turned up at Speaker's Corner and I delivered his speech. And I delivered it to thousands of people and it was, it, it was a brilliant moment for us. It felt like a real triumphant moment yeah. for free speech. Yeah, that's right. But then, so then since then, then Twitter have removed us. And on the 6th of May, I'm organising a march from Speaker's Corner to Twitter's offices with Milo's coming over. Um, I'm hoping Gavin McGuinness. I'm hoping um, Stefan Molyneux. Lots of characters, lots of people. Because the battle, well, our battle with Islam or our battle to talk about Islam. That's what our battle is. We're not even allowed to talk about it. Right. So now, yeah, the, the issue of free speech is so is such a pivotal point now in Britain. Yeah. We are people can see what's happening. We're, be, we're it's being taken away from us. Well, I get questions so often when we perform on campus and people talk about you know the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, and I say, hold on a second, you, you don't understand one thing. I was raised in Canada. And I brought you up as, as an example before too. I say free speech doesn't exist outside of the United States. 
period. A lot of people, they go, well, yeah. I go, nope, nope. And, and there's that famous speech uh, from the newsroom. Remember with Jeff Daniels? He goes, you're talking about what's great about America? Free speech? England has free speech. Belgium has freedom. I'm going, no, no, they don't. They do not have the same kind of free speech that you have. Christopher, in, in Christopher most, Titus did the same, same thing. Yeah, Japan has free speech. Japan, I'm like, are you serious? Are you, you think Japan has free speech? By the way, gun laws, you can't have a gun. Highest suicide in the industrialized world, Japan. Who'd have known that you could have just jumped out a 60-story uh, window? So it, kids don't understand it. And that's why I hope, if, if nothing, I do not want you to be a cautionary tale in the sense that I really don't, I really want this to end well for you, Tommy. You've, you've brought up some things that obviously are concerning, and I feel, I, I, I'm worried about you because I know how unsafe it is over there. I want you to stay as safe as possible and anything we can do to help you with that. But I do hope that people at least see what has happened to you already with the prison, uh, what has happened to you already with the speech laws, and understand it as a cautionary tale that not only does freedom of speech not exist outside the United States, not only are there people like you out there fighting for it actively, but it could very easily go away in the United States if the same kind of people who've achieved power in Europe achieve that here in the States. Because it's not a slippery slope argument, it's not a straw man, it is absolutely what they believe in, what they want here. Tommy, Amazing work that you've been doing. Give everyone your plugs before you go. I really want people to, to check you out and support you. Basically, just TommyRobinson.online. And there you'll be able to keep up to date with what we're doing on my Facebook page. And, um, yeah, that's it. We've got some, we've got some exciting things planned. I, Very I, exciting. And, and, and I take – you know when they do negative things to me, when they make those moves, whether it be imprisonment, what they also do at the same time and what I take satisfaction that it does, it lets everyone else who's watching see it's, it shows it shows how totalitarian they are. It shows the tyranny that's coming. Yeah. And, and and America, you need to realize and really wake up because the, the country I thought I lived in prior to starting my activism is a very different country to what I now know I live in. And those same trends and problems, I'm watching them grow and start. I'm watching your universities. I'm seeing exactly the same is going through your country. Yeah, that is absolutely correct. And one thing I also want to note. For people out there, I can already see the comment section, oh, is he triggered? No, no, listen, Tommy Robinson doesn't just go out and say, I was banned on Twitter and bitch about it. Mm. He then moves to another platform and makes sure that he is active. There is nobody out there who whines less and actually does more than Tommy Robinson in the UK. I recognize that. I hope people out there do when they're thinking of who to support with their dollar. Plus, he's going to give out 7,000 pounds next time to anyone wow. who finds his, uh, his accuser. 7,000 pounds cash from his pocket. Tommy Robinson dot online. Thank you for being here, sir. <laughs> Hey, did you like this video? It, what, you didn't? Oh, you're a cat person? Well, that makes sense. Disregard him and or her slash Z. Everyone else, hit the subscribe button and leave your comment below as to why you like this video. Hey, you know what, crazy cat, you can get back, you can, you can comment below too as to why you don't like it.